What was that, YYZ? decided to drive on up to uh, Birmingham Piston on the exterior of the building it's Birmingham Piston Warehouse but uh, locally known as Birmingham Piston and uh, decided to go ahead and change out the timing set on the old uh, Cadillac being forced to drive an S-Class Mercedes while your Cadillac is uh, on the lift is kind of a tragedy but uh, We've got a brand new timing set from Birmingham Piston. Didn't have to order it, and all I had to do was pick it up because they had it in stock. Okay, we've got to take the uh, lower radiator hose off. So I'm just going to knock that out real quick before I uh, take the oil pan off. I don't want anything splashing up in the engine. All right, I uh, slit the lower radiator hose a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it because it's welded itself to the water pump. I don't know how old it is, maybe four or five years. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a new hose instead of fighting that battle and uh, draining the coolant out of it uh, first. And then after that's done, we'll uh, go ahead and pull the oil pan down. All right, while our coolant is draining, we will uh, loosen the bolts on the oil pan. We'll take most of them out. The PB blaster has been uh, working for several days now, so these are no big deal. All right, so these up uh, bolts on the oil pan up on the driver's side front are basically behind the uh, motor mount, really hard to get to. So long extensions and little whoop de doos uh, those, those kind of things are your friends. There we go. And that one is directly behind the motor mount. And here's the other one behind the uh, passenger frame rail. Thankfully, they're not tight or rusted onto the engine or all that stuff. All right, last two bolts. We've got our lower radiator hose off now. There was a ton of uh, coolant left in the engine, so I'm glad I did that. I had to clean everything up. It was a big old mess. I'm expecting the oil pan to just fall down on me. Uh, I think up next, a rubber mallet is in order. Well, that worked out well. That's rather musical, actually. What was that, YYZ? Try a screwdriver. Careful. You don't want to warp the flange of your oil pan now. I'm assuming this has never been off the car. All right, so what I'm going to do is work on this for a little while and uh, pry and poke and pry and poke and gingerly loosen our oil pan away from uh, Mother 472. All right, I heard a little boonk. There we go. All right, she's coming loose now. Yeah, boy. She's been on there a long time. All right, screwdriver method on the driver's side next. All right, so uh, ultimately we uh, got the old Carport Forge uh, deer antler knife out. And that gave me a uh, it's not very deep, right? So you put it in there like that and tap on it. Man, that worked out really good. Uh, consequently, that's made out of a, uh, I'm not sure what that's made out of, actually. There we go. Easy. Easy. Let's not get all crazy now. Huh. How many oil pans off Cadillac Big Blocks have you removed? I don't know. Never. None. This is the first. Uh, what do we do now? Let's see. Do we push it? It's just on the flex plate there. Can we go that way and then pull it down? Or should we just not worry and rip it out of the car? All right, so this rear rubber gasket is kind of in the way. So let's get that out of the way. I wonder if that's original. Put it over there and inspect it later. The darn flex plate is in the way. 
let's see maybe if we go up yeah there we go no maybe let's do this or maybe i may have to end up raising the engine that would suck or i could just be a monumental dumbass Maybe it's got to be pulled down in a symmetrical fashion or an asymmetrical fashion. All right, long story short, uh, I've been trying to figure out how to get this oil pan out of this car. And there was three things in the way, basically. First, I thought maybe it was the uh, oil dipstick tube right there. So if you move the oil pan that way, the dipstick tube is in the way. Next, I thought, well, the oil pump pickup tube might be a problem. You can see it bolted to the side of the motor right there, and it does bump on the inside of the oil pan to some degree. You can see I've got the oil pan cocked off to the side over there like that, in that direction. And so what's the third thing that's keeping us from freeing up? Well, it's the uh, timing cover right there. You can see where the oil pan is bumping up against the timing cover. I can't move it back this way. I can't move it this way and everything else is preventing me. So anyway, the factor service manual has a flaw in the procedure. The procedure should say, loosen the timing cover and just remove it, basically, uh, and then take the oil pan off. So there you go. There's your tip for your 472 oil pan removal. I'm gonna put this oil pan loosely back up on the engine with a couple of bolts, and I'm going to uh, remove the uh, timing cover next. Oh, and one uh, added thing I wanted to note here. I uh, was taking a look at my timing chain, and I'm glad I bought one because that rascal, I stuck my finger up in there, and that rascal is loose, let me tell you what. All right, let me put this oil pan back up on the engine temporarily, and then we'll take the front cover off uh, to proceed. All right, let's go ahead and get our timing cover and water pump off next. I'm going to start with the hardest to uh, reach bolt, which is over on the passenger side, and you can't see it. I'm using a ratcheting closed-in wrench. All right, that took longer than I anticipated. I'm thinking these water pump bolts are gonna need to be replaced. A lot of rust on them. Yeah, that's nasty right there. I don't think this water pump's ever been off this motor. I got a rag covering up the uh, crankshaft, the end of the crankshaft to keep the rust out. I don't know, we'll try to clean these bolts up and see what happens. Where they were screwed into the block, they're not rusted, but where uh, up inside the water pump, they're a bit rusted. What's next? Here's one over here. All right, let me get these two uh, 3 8 inch bolts off next. All right, what's left? Uh, two bolts, including one that holds the, that's uh, strapped to the fuel line. So we'll take it off next. All right, last bolt. I'm assuming this uh, timing cover and pump is pretty well adhered to the uh, engine, and I shouldn't have to worry about it just falling right off of there. Shows you how my brain works. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Yeah, I was missing one bolt there. Pesky rascal. Let's see if this pump will come off here. There we go. About time, goodness gracious. Let's see, can we take it out down through the bottom? Don't tear up the radiator now. All right, boy, that thing's nasty. All right, let's see if we can gingerly get this timing cover to release here. Yeah, it's, it's starting to come on out now. We don't want to bend stuff, you know? That's, that's not good. I hope you guys can see. I put you up top. So that uh, little sticky outy thing for the uh, timing marker is a uh, tight fit, so we're working our way around that thing. A sticky outy thing is a technical term, really. Tappy tap tap. Let's go with a little bitty screwdriver here. Man, that's solid. What is going on with that? I guarantee you they ain't never been off the motor. Well, I guess I'm about to get that get to this thing from up top. I 
I'm being real careful here, folks. You know, I don't want to tear anything up. This uh, passenger side dowel pin has got some corrosion on it or something, you know. Just offering a fair amount of uh, resistance, don't you know? But we got her in the end. Careful. As James would say, careful, careful. James knows who I'm talking about. We got a bunch more stuff to take off, folks. We're not done yet, but that was a big uh, win right there. Man, this is a heavy duty piece of metal. All right, let me, uh, let's get topside and uh, we'll show you what we got going on here. All right, while we're down here, I wanted to get this on the cell phone just to show you what was going on here. That's what we got. That's our timing chain right there. That's pretty daggum loose. Now this side over here, it's a little, it's a little tighter because you know the way the motor spins, but man, I wonder if that was causing any performance issues. I'm not sure, but it's gonna it's gonna get changed out, that's for sure. Alright, uh, we got the old cover off there, but we're still at a standstill. I'll say that ten times real fast. Uh, still can't get the oil pan off. Uh, that's the next step, obviously. So what have I done to attempt to get the oil pan off? I have uh, disconnected the oil pickup tube and it is now laying down inside the oil pan which is dangling under the car. Uh, it's three bolts, two on the motor and one on one of the bearing caps. So not a huge deal getting that off of there. Uh, but to no avail, the oil pan still won't come out. So I want to do some more head scratching. But at this point, uh, we may in fact have to raise the engine. So I know that sounds crazy, but that's where we're at. So I can't do anything. I cannot move forward until I take the oil pan and drop it down. So also I went to about 18 different parts houses. Ultimately, I stopped at the local family owned old school parts house. And what did they have? Sure enough, a 9 16 diameter bolt with 18 threads per inch, uh, fine thread here, and that's what you need to go into the end of the crankshaft. I uh, got some washers here to tighten up on. That's what we use to uh, turn the engine whenever we get around to that part, but ultimately, and guess, and none of the big box name uh, places had this. Lowe's, Home Depot, AutoZone, O'Reilly, Advance, none of these places have this 9 16 by 18 bolt. So that leaves us now with the oil pan. That's next on the agenda, so I gotta do some more head scratching. All right, quick update on parts. Here's the water pump. Uh, the impeller looks to be in uh, good shape, actually, just from an initial inspection. Let's see what we have here. Is that debris? What is that? No, well, that's just metal. Metal casting, I guess, maybe. Not sure, the water pump was working fine. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna clean it up and reinstall it. And here's the timing cover. This is nice and flat, so this ought to clean up really nice with the wire wheel. And I've got some caddy blue paint we'll paint it up with. And here's the old seal. So let's pull that out real quick with a screwdriver and pop the new one in when we get when the time comes. Uh, the front end parts are uh, good to go. They're all painted up and ready to go. We've got the uh, strut rods there. Got the upper uh, control arms, lower control arms, dust covers, and all that stuff. The upper control arm uh, shafts that go between there, those are still on order and they have not been received yet. And the pile of parts just keeps getting bigger and bigger. We haven't put anything on the car yet. We just keep get, buying more parts. There's the rear main seal right there. And that's our new dust covers that go up in the fender. And this is the um, timing chain set. And then we've got the inner and outer tie rods uh, laying down here. Those things are pricey. Holy cow. But, hey, they're original equipment, so can't complain about that. And we uh, soaked our springs in evapo rust for a couple of days, and we cleaned them up, so I, I need to paint those. I'm thinking about maybe hot pink. What do you guys think? We're back out here to the mobile paint booth, and I just got uh, through putting on the first dust coat on the uh, transmission inspection cover. You see, you know, it looks a little uh, mottled looking, but uh, thus, uh, that is rust pitting. And uh, this was pretty badly rusted. So I soaked it in evapo rust for a few days. 
and then I cleaned it up and we're going to paint it up. Two or three more, a couple of more coats of uh, Cadillac blue on that and that'll look uh, brand new. All right, so I took the two bolts out of the rear transmission mount and I'm going to lift up the back of the transmission with the transmission jack. Got some wood here, got a piece of plywood onto the transmission pan. I've done this before when I changed out the transmission mount a few years ago and had no issues with it. All right, we got our oil pan out finally, and uh, we can get to everything, and clear, including our uh, rear main seal right up underneath that rear bearing cap right there. And uh, just initial inspection on the engine here, you know, basically, you know, looking good, really. I don't see any issues. They could have done a better job on that crank lobe right there. But then again, I figured nobody's going to be looking at it. This is where the uh, oil pickup tube was uh, bolted right there, which I did not need to remove comically, but that's okay. It's an adventure. Just look at it like an adventure. Piston rods are numbered as they should be. Look at there. There it says eight right there. And where's some other numbers? There's a number six. There's a five and so on and so forth. We can, we have our choice of things we want to do. We could just go ahead and do the rear main seal now, or we could work on the, the, uh, the timing set up here on the front of the motor. I think I'm gonna do this. It will probably be the more difficult of the uh, two tasks. First thing we have to do is get the motor at top dead center, and then we're gonna take uh, you know the distributor out and uh, the eccentric for the uh, fuel pump and a few other things. All right, let's move forward and get this timing set out of here, man. All right, on the Cadillac big block motor and a lot of other GM engines, uh, when you want to replace your timing set, your timing marks uh, are gonna need to be uh, at uh, 12 o'clock and six o'clock. That means the cam gear timing mark is gonna be pointed down and the uh, crank uh, timing mark points up and they're close to, and they're, you know, they'll be right across from one another. I think this one I've got, I went over a little too far. So I've got to go back around on the engine that timing mark lining up like that does not mean you're pointed at top dead center on cylinder number one. It means you're pointed at top dead center on cylinder number four. And we're going to rotate our engine back around. Until our timing marks line up. Here it comes. And it's kind of tricky. You don't want to go too far, you know. I think I might use a breaker bar on that uh, socket wrench so, it, so it'll be easier for me and I won't run past it. All right, we're almost there. And I'm going to be slipping my cell phone down in there to... Uh, check my progress. It's easy to run past it. And you don't want to turn the motor backwards. You can't just go back. You go back, you got to go all the way around again. By golly, I think we got it, folks. All right. I'm going to do a little more checking and then we're going to start to uh, remove the distributor. All right, time now to uh, remove the distributor now that we have the uh, timing marks lined up. I think a nut driver is in order. All right, let's see if this uh, thing is... Well, let's disconnect our vacuum line first. Let's do that, shall we? There we go. Easy. Come on out of there. You can do it. What's holding me up here? The hold down is holding me up. That's what it is. I thought it would just lift right off the motor like everything else. No. That piece of metal is in a little bit of a bind on the bolt there. 
All right, there's the hold down. Wedged itself around the threaded shaft it was on. There we go. Come on out of there, girl. Yeah. Oh, goodness, I forgot to disconnect my wire. I need to take that off of the uh, coil there. Whoopsie. I'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. All right, got it. forgot to disconnect our coil wire connection here. There we go. All right, come on, Dizzy. Let's go. All right, so since your uh, timing marks are lined up uh, basically on top dead center of compression stroke for number four cylinder, um, the timing marks line up right here on the distributor. This is top dead center, right? Zero degrees, top dead center on number four. The distributor at that time with the timing marks lined up is actually pointing right here. Well, guess what that is? That's the advance that's built into the distributor, right? So we've got a few degrees of advance. I forget what it is, eight or 10 or something like that. So, all right, but we got marks. All right, we're following the manual here, folks. We're not just, you know, lollygagging around here. Actually, I'm following the procedure for the camshaft removal. Comically, there is no procedure for timing set replacement. All right, up next, we're gonna take the oil pump off. Why? Because, well, it's necessary. These are half inch bolts. There's five of them. Whoopsie. All right, good old USA Napa. Got my uh, half inch and 9 16 closed in wrench here. And it is one of my bestest and favorite tools ever. Ugh, coolant keeps dripping from basically everywhere. Oh, right, that's welded onto the engine pretty well. There we go. Just a little tappy tap tap. And it just comes right out. And then there's our, uh, there's the drive shaft that goes into the end of the uh, distributor. All right, we've got to take the fuel pump off now. Uh, I'm not going to remove the rubber lines. I'm just going to disconnect the hard line and then disconnect the uh, pump from the car. All right, so uh, getting a big wrench on this uh, outlet housing is really kind of a pain. So I'm going to see if I could just tap that loose without too much fanfare. There we go. I got a uh, pile of oil dry down below. I'm going to let the fuel drip into that. All right, we got the uh, fuel line disconnected there without too much fanfare. That pipe's under a little bit of tension there, but uh, seems to work just fine. Let's go ahead and uh, remove the pump from the car next. Let's see if we can get a uh, ratcheting wrench up in there. There we go. All right, one bolt. I had this pump off this car a while back. I can't remember why. Yeah, let's see if we can get that other bolt off of there. It's uh, it's way up in there. I can't film it, so I'll be right back. All right. Come on out of there now. There we go. We're just going to leave that right there. I have to put a new gasket on, but that's all right. I think I'll get a tie wrap and tie that up. All right, we're going to take the uh, eccentric off for the fuel pump. Hopefully, we won't turn the motor in the process. There we go. Not entirely sure this is necessary. All right, let's get this cam sprocket off next. I guess it makes sense that they're not on there too tightly because if they were, you'd turn the motor trying to remove this thing from the engine. So consequently, these uh, little star lock washers are very important. All right, we should be free. Yeah, come on out of there. Let's get some eyeballs on this thing over on the uh, workbench. 
All right, this thing's uh, seen better days. It's pretty rough shape. The nylon coating is coming off. It's off this tooth, that one, that one, probably several more. It's uh, it's cracked quite badly. And there was a lot of slack in the chain, so I'm assuming the chain is stretched as well. I think we're catching this at the right time. Surely that will cause some sort of a hiccup every now and again, you know, in the valve train. All right, folks, uh, let's uh, do a review here. I think I'm going to call it a day. We got the distributor out. We got the oil pump off. We got the uh, fuel pump off. We got the cam gear off. We got the uh, timing chain off. Still have not removed the uh, crank sprocket. But I think I'm going to save that for part three. All right, folks, I'm wiped out. I tell you what, I think I'm going to call it a weekend, and I'm going to call it part two of our rear main seal, front seal, and timing set replacement on the old 1971 Coupe de Ville with a 472 Cadillac Big Block. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below somewhere you know where it is. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy restoring, repairing, maintaining, and driving your classic Cadillac.